Our next topic is correlation. Now, correlation is at the center of all kinds of different statistics as well, uh, on top of being correlation itself. So sometimes in papers, you'll see correlations reported. Um, you see this a lot in medical research, where it's oftentimes hard to do experimental studies. Um, but correlation also is going to provide the raw materials for regression, which we're going to learn about next. So correlation can be thought of as a measurement of how two variables track each other, or covary. If one goes up, does the other go up? If one goes up, does the other go down? In the first example, if when one variable goes up, the other variable also goes up, you're going to see a positive correlation between those variables. As shoe size increases, or I'm sorry, as foot size increases, so does shoe size. That's a positive correlation. However, you can also have negative correlations in which as one variable goes up, the other variable goes down. So for example, you could think of your opponent's score in some game, say a soccer game, and your probability of winning, right? As their score is going up, your probability of winning is going down. So that would be a negative correlation. Um, importantly, and this is always pointed out when correlation comes up, um, you have to realize you can't necessarily infer causation from correlation, right? You know that as foot size goes up, shoe size goes up. But from there, you couldn't infer that bigger shoes are causing bigger feet. That doesn't make any sense. Clearly, the bigger feet are causing the bigger shoes, and we know this from common sense, but when you're doing experiments, um, oftentimes you're not going to know which variable is leading to the other one. Furthermore, you, you may actually have a third factor that's causing both of these things to go up, right? So for example, you could show something like, as students have more money, their test scores go up, right? And this may have nothing to do with money leading to test scores but rather there could be some third variable, such as opportunity in a society that's causing them both to have more money as well as to have higher test scores, right? So whenever you're looking at correlations, you have to be very careful not to make any inference about what's causing what. However, it does often hint at what's causing what, and there are some more interesting and sophisticated techniques that can allow you to at least get a first idea of how things are being caused. Um, we're not gonna go into it here, but basically, what's called structural equation modeling can be used with correlations to try and get at causation. But in general, if all that you have is a correlation, you can't know what specifically is causing what, like you can with experimental manipulations. Um, correlation is also extremely robust. It can be done not only with interval variables and ratio variables, but it can also be done for frequencies of nominal variables, where you're using proportions of the two variables. Um, here's the equation you'll see at the bottom. So R is the correlation. R's are always going to be somewhere between negative 1 and 1, right? You can't have a correlation that's greater than 100% or negative 100% if it's a negative correlation is the way that you should think about this. So I have two equations here. Um, one, again, you don't need to know all the details, but just be familiar with it, is the covariance of X times the covariance of Y over their standard deviations. So essentially this just says, are they varying together or in the opposite direction? And then dividing by the standard deviations to standardize it, to bring that value between 0 and 1 or 0 and negative 1 if it's a negative correlation. On the right side, you can get a better sense of what's going on here. So notice that on the, on the, um, in the numerator, you've got the difference score of your x variable times the difference score of your y variable. So let's say for a given subject, he has an x that's higher than the average, right? That's going to end up being a positive number. Then they also have a y that's bigger than average. That's also going to be a positive number. And notice if you multiply the two together, you're going to get a positive number. At the bottom, you're dividing by the variance times the degrees of freedom. Um, all you need to know here um, is just that it standardizes it. So if x goes up and y goes up so that they're tracking each other, Right? You're going to get a positive value, and then the denominator just standardizes this to make it a value between 0 and 1.